going on guys it's Jho back with more destiny 2 and today we're gonna be going over how to get the savior title which is the exclusive seal for season of dawn so in this video I'm gonna go over all the triumphs that are required as well as all the items within the collection badge that you need to get this title or seal so overall the seal isn't too difficult to complete and if you've been playing this season you probably have some progress on this already so uh, let's get straight into it. I'm going to start off with the triumphs first and then I'm going to do all the items from the collection badge at the end. So we're starting off with the triumphs. For the first few triumphs, it's increasing the resonance rank of all the planetary obelisks. So you need to rank up all four of the planetary obelisks up to at least a rank of 10. And in order to do this, you need to give polarized fractaline to each of these obelisks. So it costs 200 polarized fractaline for each rank. And in order to get polarized fractaline, there's various ways in the game right now. I did make a video previously, and I'll link it in the description below if you guys want to check out how to get polarized fractaline. But most people already have some progress or even completed all of these already. So you just need to increase the resonance rank of the EDZ obelisk, the Tangled Shore obelisk, the Mars one, and the Nessus one, at least up to 10. And then you will meet the requirements for all four of these first few triumphs. And then moving on to the next one after that, it is Global Resonance. And if you did the previous four, then you don't really need to do anything. And this one will also auto-complete. This one is just increasing the resonance rank of any of the obelisks. And you need a total rank of 40. So if you do the other four triumphs prior to this, then you'll get all of them to 10, which will be 40 total. So this one will auto-complete. And this one also rewards you a ghost shell, which is one of the items required for the collection badge. I'll get back to that when I get more into that badge at the end. And then moving on to the next one, we got link repair. And it says repair each of the fractured links found on the tower obelisk. So uh, basically you have to do the quest from same 14 that requires you to set up the tower obelisk. And then you have to repair all four links from the other four obelisks on the other planets. So there's a few steps for this one. You start off with the cornerstone quest from Saint 14. And then you repair the tower obelisk. And then after that you have to link all four of the other planetary obelisks. And after doing so you will complete this triumph. Moving on we got Saintly Savior save Saint 14 from the Infinite Forest. So this one's related to the story part of the season. And uh, there was a couple quests in the very beginning of the season. The first couple weeks. And uh, once you complete all these steps on those two quests. The ultimate goal or the ultimate ending of it was that we saved Saint 14 from dying in the past. And then he ultimately is now alive in present day. So once you complete all the steps on the quest, then you will unlock this triumph. So it's pretty straightforward. It starts off with Osiris. You have to go to him first. So you just follow the quest steps on this one. It's pretty straightforward. And it ultimately ends with a mission where you have to defeat a boss and save Saint 14. And this one's important also because it's a prerequisite to some of the other content later in the season. So I believe you need to do this before doing like the Bastion exotic quest. And then you also need to do this before you can participate in Empyrean Foundation and do that quest as well. So you need to do this one first. And most people probably already finished this by now because it was available from like the start of the season. And then moving on to the next few triumphs, we got some Sundial related ones. So starting off with the first one, we got Flare Slayer. And this one is defeat each of the Scion Flares found within the Sundial. So at the very beginning of the season, there were different bosses that rotated every week on the Sundial activity. So the good news is that if you're missing one of these bosses when they were rotating, you can just defeat the new boss, which is kind of a final boss, which combines all three of the previous bosses. And defeating this new boss will give you credit for the Flare Slayer Triumph as well. So uh, that also goes into the next one, which is Inotam's Ruin. And it just says to defeat the new boss, Inotam. So doing this will also give you credit for the other one. So that's a really good time saver as well. And then moving on to the next one, we have Race Through Time. Complete the Sundial within a set amount of time. So it doesn't specify on the Triumph before you get it what the set amount of time is. I believe according to a lot of people, it is 15 minutes. And once I unlock the Triumph, for me, once I completed it, it says within 14 minutes because that's the run that I got it in. But I believe according to majority of people that I've seen talk about it, 
I believe it is 15 minutes. So as long as you complete a full run within 15 minutes, you should get this triumph unlocked. So this one's not too difficult. All you got to do is make sure you're playing the objective for whatever encounters that you get. And once you complete the encounters as quick as possible, get to the boss and then try to defeat the boss as quick as possible as well. So make sure you're using some good weapons to clear ads and stuff. Make sure you have some of the mods on so you can deal with some of the champions and then make sure you have some high DPS weapons when you get to the boss fight as well. And then moving on to the next one, we got undefeatable, complete a sundial run without dying. So this one's a little bit more challenging just because there's a lot of stuff going on in the sundial. There's a lot of ads that spawn in. There's some champions that can deal a lot of damage. And it's kind of difficult to stay alive sometimes. I recommend playing the normal version if you're going for this triumph. Don't play it on legend if you're going for this. But for this one, what I did was I tried to play as safe as possible. I tried to stay in safe areas so that I wasn't going to be targeted by multiple enemies at the same time. So like for example in this footage, I'm in like a tree up here for this encounter and I was trying to play it safe, I was dealing damage from a distance. I also tried to use a subclass that would save me in case I ever got low on health. So I was using the middle tree Dawnblade with the Well of Radiance so I could pop Well of Radiance if I ever got really low on health. I could use my grenade for the divine protection to give me an overshield if I ever got low on health. Or you could use like a healing rift. So if you're using like warlock, I'd recommend that to try to keep yourself alive as long as possible. If you're playing on like a hunter, using invisibility would be helpful for staying alive. If you're on a titan, using the bubble for sentinel would be helpful to stay alive as well. So any subclass that can help you stay alive as much as possible is the best way to go about doing this one. And then the next one is called Legendary Scion and it says to defeat Inotom on Legend difficulty or higher. So it's pretty straightforward. You just gotta defeat the new boss in the Sundial on Legend difficulty this time. So this one can get pretty intense on this difficulty. I recommend having a team with you. I recommend having some good weapons. Also your gear is gonna get locked once you enter the activity so you can't swap around during the activity and I recommend using like good subclasses for end game content like Well of Radiance for Warlocks, the Bubble on the Titan, probably Night Stalker, Tether with the Hunter and the final boss fight itself can get pretty hectic as well. There's a lot of ads shooting at you. The boss attacks itself can be pretty devastating because you can get hit by a lot of different elemental attacks because he has all three of the different attacks from the three previous bosses. So it can get pretty intense and pretty hectic. For me, I was using Well of Radiance to try to keep myself and my teammates alive as long as possible. So it was very helpful. We had people using Titan Bubble as well. So anything to help keep us alive and deal some damage to the boss, clear ads, all really helpful. Again, you should have mods on your weapons to deal with champions as well. And then moving on to the next one, we got the Torchbearer Triumph. So this one was the final triumph that became available to unlock. And uh, this one uh, just unlocked as the community completed stage 7 of the Empyrean Foundation. So we finally donated enough polarized fractaline and we completed the rebuilding of the lighthouse. And so after completing the final stage of Empyrean Foundation, there was a new quest that was available from the Tower Obelisk. And then there was a short cutscene, and after that you get the Triumph unlocked. So uh, that is pretty simple. Everyone gets it because the community all contributed to this one. And then moving on to the last two Triumphs, we got the Devil's Ruin and Bastion. These are the two new exotic quests that came out this season. So all you have to do for these is just go through the exotic quest for both of them and get the weapon. Both of these exotic quests are on the simpler side compared to previous ones. So uh, those two are the last two triumphs you need for the uh, seal. And then moving on to the collections badge. So you need to get everything within the badge for at least one of your characters in order to unlock this for the seal. So most of these items you might already have already, but you do need to grind for some of this stuff. So let's start off from the first one. We got the time swept shell. So you don't really need to do anything extra for this one. This one comes from the global resonance triumph that you do need for the seal. So that's how you get this one. 
The next few ones are probably the stuff that you're going to have to grind for. So you do need three new emblems, one for Crucible, one for Gambit, and one for Strikes or Vanguard. And then you also need three new shaders from those respective activities as well. So these are the three quests you got to complete in order to get those three emblems and the three shaders. So we'll go through them really quickly. We got the Crucible one, Display of Power. And there's two steps to each of these quests. So for completing the first step, it will give you the shader. And then after you complete the second step, you'll get the emblem. So for the first step for Crucible, you just need to defeat opponents. You need to get Valor Rank Brave. And you also need to get five a Crucible wins. So pretty straightforward. Most of these aren't too complicated. You just got to play the respective game mode and then you'll get it eventually. And then for the second step, you just got to continue defeating more opponents. You got to get to Valor Rank Heroic. And then you also need to get rapidly defeated opponents. So you got to get two kills in a quick succession. So uh, you can use a super, you can use anything. But as long as you get a quick double kill, then you'll get credit for rapidly defeated opponents. And then moving on to the Gambit one, we got Green with Envy. So this one is also just playing a lot of Gambit and you should eventually get this one. So for the first step, you just need to defeat enemies. You got to get Infamy Rank Heroic and then you got to bank moats. So uh, this one, uh, your fire team members also contribute toward the progress for this one. So uh, playing just Gambit games will eventually get you this one. And also it says wielding auras from Reaper and Collector sets will also give you more progress for this step. So if you have armor pieces for the Reaper and Collector sets from Reckoning, then putting those on and getting the aura will give you more progress to do this one a lot quicker. And then for the second part, you just got to defeat more enemies. You got to get an infamy rank of mythic, I believe. And then also you have to defeat 150 guardians in a gambit. So this one was a little bit bugged for some people toward the beginning of the season. And Bungie did try to fix it. And I believe they eventually just auto-completed the infamy section because that one wasn't completing for some people. And then for the final quest, which is for Vanguard or Strikes, this one requires you, for the first step, it's to defeat 30 bosses. Then you gotta get 400,000 points and you also gotta get 450 solar kills. So uh, for solar kills, it is abilities or weapons. It's not either or. And so just use solar weapons use solar subclasses and eventually you'll get a credit for this one and in terms of the points you do have to play something that has scoring in it so it has to be a nightfall either the nightfall or Dio or the original nightfalls you can get scoring on it as well so as long as you accumulate that much points over multiple runs of nightfalls then you will be able to complete that section and if you don't have a fire team, then you can just do the nightfall ordeal and just match make it into one of the lower difficulties. So uh, not a problem if you don't have a team for this one. And then moving on to the next part, it's more of the same thing pretty much. You just got to defeat more bosses. You got to get more points. And this time it's solar weapon kills specifically. So put on some solar weapons and try to get as much kills as you can while you're doing some uh, strikes. So pretty straightforward on this one as well. My only recommendation that I have is to try to use the Devil's Ruin sidearm just because it's a solar weapon so you get credit for your solar kills. And then also it's really good for Nightfall Ordeal because it's good against Unstoppable Champions. And then not only that, but it'll give you sidearm kill progress as well for one of the ritual weapons which I'll get into next as well. So for the Vanguard ritual weapon which is a sidearm, it does require sidearm kills. And since you need to get the Devil's Ruin sidearm anyway for one of the Triumphs and for the Collection Badge, you might as well go for that first so you can utilize it in the Strikes and get progress on a different things at the same time. So that's one of my recommendations for this section. And then moving on, we got some exotics. So we got the Symmetry, we got the Devil's Ruin, and we got the Bastion. So the Devil's Ruin and the Bastion, you probably will already get completed because you need to do those Triumphs. And then the Symmetry as well, because you get it initially in the beginning of the Season Pass. And then moving on, we got this season's Ritual Weapon. So these are probably the other thing that you might need to grind a little bit more for. So we'll start off with the Komodo, which is the new Ritual Weapon for Crucible. So to get this one, you do need to complete the Heart of the Dragon quest. And this one's really simple. You just got to get Final Blows with Linear Fusion Rifles. You got to get Precision Final Blows. 
and then you gotta get glory rank heroic so the most recommended thing to do for this is to use the arbalist which is an exotic linear fusion rifle and it goes in your kinetic slot and it utilizes special ammo and that's the reason why it's so good because you don't have to wait for heavy ammo to spawn over and over so if you don't have arbalist i'd recommend going to Zur and try to get your luck and getting arbalist from one of his engrams and if you still can't get it then try to play game modes that has heavy ammo spawn a lot more frequently so something like mayhem or momentum control and then moving on to the next one we got python which is the ritual weapon for gambit this season so you need to complete the get closer quest in order to complete this one so uh, you need to get final blows with shotguns you got to get close range final blows and you got to get to infamy rank heroic so for this one just put on some shotguns go into gambit and try to get as much kills as possible what i did for this one was i used two shotguns instead of running three shotguns so i wouldn't run out of ammo pretty frequently and in case i needed something more long range to kill something so i used an icolo shotgun in my energy slot and then i also used tractor cannon in my heavy slot and i was able to do a lot of damage tractor cannon is good for the bigger enemies one more recommendation I have for this one is to make sure you equip the right mods so that you can benefit from them so for ammo wise you can equip mods like shotgun scavenger you can equip shotgun reserve so you can hold more ammo uh, you can equip special scavenger or heavy scavenger if you don't have the specific scavengers this one also goes for the komodo when you're doing that quest as well try to equip either special scavenger or linear fusion rifle scavenger and then also on the seasonal artifact there's a mod that gives you enhanced targeting for linear fusion rifles so make sure you equip that for the komodo as well so make sure you equip some of those right mods for going for those two specific weapons and then moving on to the last one which is the buzzer this is the ritual weapon for vanguard for this season so this one is done in strikes it is the anything that moves quest so you just need final blows with sidearms you need airborne final blows and then you need points you can even go in to a strike by yourself if you choose a nightfall the regular nightfall and you can just go kill enemies with a sidearm in there moving on to the next few weapons all of these are from the sundial or you can get them from the obelisk in the form of those weapon bounties so we have the steel feather repeater auto rifle we have the patron of lost causes scout rifle the breech light sidearm the martyr's retribution grenade launcher the gallant charge fusion rifle and then the line in the sand a linear fusion rifle so you just have to get one of each of those at least and you can get them pretty easily you can just play a run a sundial or you can just get the bounties and if you don't want to actually do the bounties you can just donate to the Empyrean foundation after you grab the bounties and then they will auto complete after you donate 400 polarized fractaline so you can do it that way as well and get them instantly so those are the ways you can get these weapons and then for the last stuff we got the armor so this one comes from the season pass so you probably already have this unlocked so that is how you get the savior title from this season if you have any other tips that you want to share with everyone you can leave it in a comment below thank you guys for watching that's about it for this video stay tuned for more videos and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace